All right, welcome back to our Ready Player Me C Sharp Unity Deep Dive tutorial series. Uh, I was gonna go ahead and go back to the animator again and handle jumping and whatnot, but since our player movement script is using a uh, simple move, it would basically require us to rewrite this whole thing. So we're just gonna stick with simple move. We're not gonna worry about jumping right now. Sorry if that bums you out. Maybe I'll revisit it in the future. What we're going to do is we're going to learn how to um, load this avatar at runtime. Now, there's some things we have to keep in mind. This avatar has um, an animator on it. It has an eye animation handler, a voice handler, which doesn't work in WebGL. And then also our player movement script references this avatar um, to send it animations, uh, animation parameters. Sorry for the yawn there, but it is 6.30 in the morning. <laughs> I haven't even had coffee yet. It's brewing. All right, so where are we getting our... Uh, where are we getting our avatar string from? Um, well, over here in our canvas, right? So if I were to build and run this... I don't think we changed anything. This should work WebGL, right? We're still in WebGL. If I build and run this sample scene, we should be able to create an avatar. All right, it's launched. Let's click Launch Editor. Loading my avatar. Yeah, so we can totally create an avatar here. All right, but um, that's not gonna. We still gotta make do other things. This would be a good time to mention that if you don't have some sort of source control, <clears throat> which means backing up your project, you should do so. If you've been afraid to check out Git, I encourage you to go check out Git. Um, their desktop client is really easy to use. Um, after you create your project in Unity, you can just go up to File, Add Local Repository, find it, select that folder. That's you know you're in the right folder if you see your assets folder. And then it's gonna say, hey, we don't see a repository here. Would you like to create one? Then tell it yes. And then uh, you can just start every now and then when you make changes, just put a summary of what you did. Tested, build, commit it. And you don't even have to push it up to main every time, but um, it's kind of a good idea you can also go back and if you need to restore something you can just download it from github um, you can also create different branches if you're going to be doing a lot of crazy stuff that's different than what you want on your main branch so i really encourage you to check out github it's free as, you know, as long as you keep your files sizes below 100 megabytes i mean your whole project can be more than 100 megabytes but you can't have an individual um, file that's more than that but definitely check out github it'll save your bacon in the future many all right, let's go ahead and delete this avatar here. <clears throat> All right, Plowy. Let's look at our player. No, let's look at our canvas. And there's no logic there. Where's our logic at? Um, I'm going to pause while I find my logic. Oh, wait a minute. It's probably right here, this web avatar loader. <laughs> Come on, Philip. Let's uh, put some brackets on it, make it stand out. And uh, let's double click on this. All right. So um, we have this public game object avatar. Here we have on web view avatar generated. We have this the avatar URL, which are we saving that? It doesn't look like it, but that's kind of okay. Here we're saving the avatar, which is what we need. Um, these two things are kind of out of order. Not sure why. Okay, that'll work. Um, so all we have to do now is we need to parent this to our player. So let's make a, this doesn't need to be public. Um, so I'm going to do a serialize field, not think yet this morning so i am drinking coffee now um but it's black which i'm fine with black coffee but i found that putting cream in my coffee seems to make it i don't know wake me up faster i don't know 
Um, player parent. I don't know. Is that a good name? Uh, and you know what? We don't want it to be a game object. We want it to be a transform. Since we're just going to be using it as a parent. And you parent with transform, not with game object. And then here we can do uh, avatar dot set avatar dot parent. No. Set parent. Why can't I figure out what this is? I use it like all the time. <laughs> Maybe it does need to be a game object. Oh, wait a minute. Avatar dot transform. Duh. Dot set parent. I just got done saying that. Set parent equals player parent. Boom. Right? Oh, no. Set parent. Player parent. Um, there's also another important thing to note. There are some additional parameters you could use on setting parent. Um, so if we, I'm just going to go ahead and control click on set parent. So it can accept just the parent that you want. It can accept the parent and then a bool for if world position should stay. Um, so you might think, well, if we set this to false, then it's going to automatically zero, zero, zero. Um, the child in local space, but it's not. Um, I haven't really found this makes, in just my experience, I haven't really found this super important, except when it comes to uh, UI. But then um, I think there's actually a, a different method you can call for UI that's like set rect transform parent, and that makes a big difference. But you can always play around with it. If something's not scaling or setting its position the way that you would expect it to do, try just adding a true or adding a false after the transform parent, but we're not gonna do that. We're just gonna leave it as is for now. And then we're gonna do avatar.transform.set.position, no dot local position equals new vector three, <clears throat> zero, zero, zero. And then uh, avatar dot transform dot rotation. And because I don't want to have to create a quaternion here, um, I'm just going to do this. We're just going to make it equal to the rotation of the parent. So player parent dot. All right. Uh, cool. So if we go back to the project, uh, we need to make sure that we drop our player parent in here. And really this avatar, um, I would probably want to hide that in the inspector sometimes, especially if you're not working by yourself and you're working in a team, because this might be like, oh, I got to drop some game object in there. But you don't. This is just so we can see when the avatar is loaded. Um, maybe I could even create a... Uh, so I did this to another script the other day. So let's take this and just clean that a little. And then down here, we're going to create a header. And we're just going to call this outputs. And we'll do that. So that'll make it more clear why that variable is there. And here we see outputs avatar. So that'll give us more of a clue that we don't really actually need to drop anything there. All right, let's hit play and see what, oh, we can't hit play and see what happens because of the avatar editor tool. So I gotta do another build and run. All right, let's see what this did. So we will launch our editor and we'll just go ahead and pick this cool guy. And nothing. All right, we're walking. But we're not seeing our avatar. Why? All right, so what we're gonna do is we're going to, um, because we know that we get the avatar created somewhere. Um, let's let's see. Did we create any debug logs? With the URL. 
debug the error message. Yeah, we debug the, the avatar URL. Oh, we're not actually loading it. Oh, we are. We're, that's this is if we call the method manually. This happens through uh, yeah. Let's go back over here and let's hit F12. And let's check our console. Oh, so there was some type of error. All right, let's do this for now. Let's uh, let's get rid of our canvas. And let's create uh, a test loader. And um, our scripts folder. Let's create a new script called test loader. All right, so let's go over here and we're just gonna steal, um, we're just gonna steal this stuff here. And we're gonna put it in our test loader. We're just gonna put it right in the start state. And we're not gonna update that. We probably need to use ready player me. Let's go ahead and put that using ready player me. And then um, let's set up these callbacks. Alt enter. Uh, guess we just do that guy. And then alt enter. That guy. And then this. Oh, avatar URL. We that's a variable we need to give. Oops. So let's just go like this, and we're gonna do a serialize field because we're, it doesn't need to be public. We want it to be private, but we want to see it in the inspector. And we're just gonna do a private string avatar URL. Boom. All right, so it's gonna load the avatar. And then on avatar load completed, well, let's just do this one. We're just gonna do um, debug, do a log warning. Avatar failed to load with error, then plus E dot probably message. The E is this failure argument that comes in, and then it's got some different components in it that we can get. All right, and uh, yep, so we're good there. So now on avatar load completed. Uh, so we just want the logic we already wrote, which is this guy. And on avatar load completed, throw that in there. There's some stuff that it doesn't know what it is. Um, so we're just going to copy this. I don't think we need our avatar to be public yet. Oops, click avatar. And then we need player parent. Copy private transform player parent. All right. So basically all we've done here is we've just bypassed the actual avatar editor itself so that we can actually see what's going on. And we just have a, oh, we don't even have a script here. We just need to get an avatar URL, which I'm just going to grab the one that we already have in our loader up here. And then grab our player parent. And I did put that in this one, didn't I? Yeah. Okay. All right, so let's uh, let's hit play here and see what happens. Ah, so the issue is, oh, why do I have a half body one? That's weird. Um, I think our issue is happening because we're not waiting for the avatar to actually, yes, we are waiting for the avatar to actually load because this on, on avatar load completed won't happen until we actually have the avatar loaded. <laughs> So what is it saying? Oh, well, 
Oh, could our player movement script be what's causing it to be angry anyway? So let's just disable that for now. And let's see if anything changes. But let me get a full body avatar. I have no idea why it's doing half body up there. I'm going to go get a full body one. All right, I got a full body avatar now. Let's hit play, see what happens. All right. So let's see. Our player is here. And our avatar is also here. Our avatar does come with an animator, but no controller. And then the rest of this is just the renderer and the armature. Um, also, we're not getting any um, visings on this like we were getting whenever we loaded it from up here, right? Because our settings. Oh, we have morph target set to none. That's why. Okay. <clears throat> so it's doing what it should. So our issue is probably being caused by just an error in our player movement script where it's trying to do all these animations um, and there's nothing there to do it to. So let's fix some of that. First off, um, we don't even know what this animator is. So let's come up here and we need to have a copy this because I'm just I want to type serialized field. And this is going to be an animator, animator controller. Uh, and I should type controller, not a character controller, animation controller, animator. Okay, it's just animator. All right. And um, we're just going to call this our animator, like that. And then we also probably make this even easier for us is we want uh, to know our ready player me. No, we want to know our player movement. And the reason it's not finding that, we're going to call this player movement script, is because I believe our player movement is in our namespace, right? Yep. So I should create a namespace over here, but I'm just feeling lazy. So I'm just going to say using googly eyes games dot ready player me dot. Boom. <clears throat> Only for the purpose to show you that's how you use your namespaces. Um, so let's just go back over here and let's look at our test loader. Now our animator is going to be here. Nations ready player me animator. I can't. Why can't I do that? It is an animator controller type. It's telling us that right there. So why can I not? Make this an animator controller. Oh, because you have to use Unity Editor animations. All right. Ugh. All right. And test loader. Now let's try putting the animator there. Great. And our player movement script, we can just grab our player and drag it here, and it'll automatically get that. Let's look at our player movement script. It's on enable. It can do those things. That should be fine. Um, but on our update, we don't want to do this yet. So what we could do is I could either disable the whole script and then enable it um at runtime you know what i think i'm just gonna do that let's go to our test loader 
once this avatar is loaded, what we want to do is avatar dot get component animator. Now it's making me second guess myself. Um, that should still be right. Yeah, animator. Because we put the animator controller on the animator. That's what's happening. All right, so let's sit, call this animator animator. No, I can't do that because we have variable animator. Let's call this animator controller. All right, so we have an animator called animator. I don't think I spelled that right. Animator. All right, animator animator equals get that component animator. Or better yet, let's do this all in one line. We get to that component and then we want to set the animator controller. Is it runtime animator controller then? And then that equals animator controller. All right, that looks like it works. And then we can do player movement script dot abled equals true. So what this is doing is because when our avatar loads in, it doesn't know what its controller is, we're setting its controller on its animator. And then we're going to enable our player movement script and that should make it less angry. Did I hit save? I did. All right, and then because I renamed that variable, we had to come back over here and put our animator controller back in. Can I just click on this? Cool. <clears throat> All right, and now if we hit play, let's see what happens. It loaded really fast because it found the avatar already loaded in my avatars folder over here. And look at that, we're done. No, we're not done because that's not good enough for you, right? You wanna actually now animate the uh, character, which it should be doing that. So I don't know why, because if we look at the avatar, you can see there's this ready player me animator. And if we click at that, look at that, we have our movement. Ignore that jump stuff there because I opted not to do that because we are using simple move. So what was our error we were getting? Unassigned the player movement. Oh, I didn't? The variable animator of player movement has not been assigned. Oh, so we can do a uh, player movement script dot animator equals. I hate to get the component again, um, but I'm going to be super lazy and I'm just going to get the component again. You really don't want to be getting components a lot, but. It'll be all right. Um, I could have saved this variable and saved one of those searching for the components. I think we're good now. I'm going to try hitting play again. All right, I'm not seeing any errors in my console. He's looking like he's idle. And look at that, walkie walkie. But we are not able to look in the direction. And what? what now what do we have? The variable avatar of player movement has not been assigned. Oh, all right. I think that might be the last bit we need to do, and then it'll fix it. So, uh, we can also, I'm doing this all before we enable the script so that we don't get errors. So now we can say player movement script dot avatar. Oh, but it's probably a private serialized. It is. So now we can just delete that and let's make it public. <clears throat> Go back to our test loader. Do, 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 do. Dot avatar equals avatar. And it probably wants a transform. So we just take our avatar dot transform. Because this is a game object for us. And so we just want to get the transform that that game object goes with. Savey, 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 savey. Let's run. All right, uh, go left. Oh, down, right, forward. Woo, pretty cool. Let's build and run and make sure it works at, uh, in the web browser. 
All right, so I may have lost track of my pause and record button, so I don't know if you saw it just now, but it did work. <clears throat> and I was gonna do a build to see if it works in the web browser, but we have to make sure that all the logic that we put in this test loader, we put up here on our uh, web avatar loader. So let's go look at this. Look at our test loader. So on avatar completed, we kind of need all this jazz. And we should just be able to do this, right? I don't see any reason why we can't just paste it. <clears throat> all right, so we need this variable. Um... One thing I'm confused about is where's our where's our animator? Because we had to do that. We had to add an animator to it's we didn't make that a runtime animator. We just made that an animator. All right. Well, I'm still just gonna let it make it. So it's gonna make it, and I'm just gonna change it. <clears throat> and then we need to create our player root. All right, so I'm just make this an animator controller. But you're not an output. Um, that, I'll just pause while I do all this because we're just gonna do the same stuff we were doing. All right, so in the script now, everything's not read, no warnings or error. Well, we kind of have a warning, but I'm not worried about that. But no errors. We need to go back over here into the editor. We need to drop our player into our player parent, which already is. <clears throat> we need to get our animator controller in there. And we need our player movement script. So we can just grab the player, drag it in there. And now we're going to disable this guy. We don't want to be reloading the avatar twice. And now let's build and run. <clears throat> Ah, you didn't see all that. I'm, I'm totally not awake yet, and my playing pausing is just not on point. Um, I had console errors. I just cleared them out. Um, I deleted the test player. What it's having an issue with is it's saying that Unity Editor and Animations doesn't exist. Um, I'll Google that here in a minute, but I'm going to build and run again and see what happens. Oh, duh. Okay, thank you, Der Hugo. Um... So it was trying to tell us we wanted runtime animator controller um, because this is Unity Editor. We can't use Unity Editor at runtime. That's only for scripts in the editor, doy. So we want this to be a runtime animator controller like it was trying to have us do before. Smarter than us. Should have trusted you, Visual Studio. My bad. Um, but then we probably have to go and reassign our variable in this. Um, wow, we don't? I do it in the right script? That's crazy. We completely changed the type. I have never seen it not erase. That blows my mind. All right, let's, uh, let's try building and running now. All right, we had compiler errors because of our test loader script that we're not even using anymore. So, <laughs> didn't even need to be included in build. And let's try building again. All right, friends, moment of truth. Launch editor. All right, I'm just going to stick with this guy. And let's see if he loads. There's really no reason he shouldn't load. Why isn't he loading? What's the problem? Why aren't you loading? Oh, everything's frozen. Heck. 12. It, there's our avatar URL. The performance warning. That's probably just from. I don't see any reason to hide all those. I just want to see these. Oh, wait, what's this? 
Uh, I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is. It should be working. Why isn't it working? I'm going to try to refresh real quick and try again. <clears throat> Lost my coffee. Okay, I can have it. All right, next. It got it. Wait, send message object web avatar loader not found? Are we closing that too fast? What's going on? All right, so back in our Ready Player Me avatar editor, um, I'm wondering if we're getting an issue here on create avatar. It's setting our canvas to false. And then weirdly, it's setting our iframe visibility to true, which that doesn't really make sense. Um, I wonder if I can just get rid of this whole thing without it getting upset at me. Um, <clears throat> but really up here, after all that's done, we can do the same stuff. But I'm actually going to try um, this. But I don't want to set the iframe visibility to true. I want to set it to false. And then I think the issue was, is we were setting the canvas to false, and then it was trying to set the iframe visibility to true again, <laughs> but it couldn't because the, uh, yeah, it, it wasn't open. All right, so after that's been set to false, then we can take our canvas.setActive and make that false, like so. Oh, also, if you're curious how I commented out all these lines at the same time, you just highlight them, control, shift, question mark, and that's how that happens. Um, but let's go ahead and build and run and see what happens. All right, let's try again. Launch the editor. <clears throat> Wait, are you kidding me? What? <clears throat> Why? Why isn't that working now? What the heck? Oh, launch the editor. Why? So this is what happens whenever you let like a week and a half go by. <clears throat> it's that part I commented out. I made that. The on create avatar, that's when the button gets clicked. So that couldn't have been what was causing our issue. And this makes sense <clears throat> because we click the button it makes our canvas that has the button on it go away but it brings our web interface up <clears throat> um so really this stuff shouldn't be here so why <clears throat> were we getting that web view issue oh. Could it be in the web view itself? Give me a few minutes. So before we forget, back on our launch button, let's make sure we do the on create avatar method. On web, what? Where's it at? Public void on create avatar. Am I blind? Why can't I see on create avatar anymore? We gotta drag it back in? I'm not seeing it. That's weird. Uh, because I didn't hit save. Stop it. Save. Alright, ready player me avatar. On create avatar. So I think I might be missing. I think I know what might be going on. So you remember this funny bit from part two where I said, hey, I remember to point this out that this script is added to an object called web avatar loader. Um, yeah, it's very important that the name stays the same. So I'm betting my issue is that I added brackets to it. And so I bet that caused the issue. <laughs> Let's build and run now. All right, what do y'all think? Is this going to work this time? I sure hope so. 
We are we're, we're not excited yet because we've gotten this far before. Oh no way! Nice. At runtime in the web browser. Why don't your pants go all the way to your shoes, my friend? All right. So that's that. That's the end of this episode. Um, comment down below where I should go next. I think our next big step. I'm torn between what I should do next. Should I do half body VR avatars next? Or should we start to introduce fusion and go ahead and continue with these full body third person characters and mess with fusion multiplayer? Let me know in the comments. Um, comment, your comment down below could determine what uh, I do next. So see you next time.